posted February 25, 2019 17 hours 24 minutes and 0 seconds AFLW continues to fight for its fair share of the limelight, particularly when it comes to broadcast and media coverage, despite its undeniable grassroots momentum. On Sunday, the AFL released its participation figures for last year showing enormous growth in women's participation for the third year running. Not coincidentally, this is the third data set to be released after the inauguration of the National Women's League. Last year's 14.2% spike means women now account for almost a third of total Australian rules football participation worldwide. That growth is no mean feat. Undoubtedly, the numbers signal the kind of revolution Gillan McLaughlin hailed before the league's inception, and his proof of the old adage, you can't be what you can't see, but it's still proving to be an uphill struggle for the young league. As reported in the Herald Sun this week, for example, Channel 7 have made the decision to drop AFLW games from their main channel for the remainder of Season 3, citing inadequate or disappointing numbers. It will be shown on 7 mate. Reportedly, the opening round of 2019 averaged 187,000 viewers compared to the figure of 896,000 in its historic first year. There is no shying away from the fact that these numbers are less than ideal, although it should be noted that all games are available to stream via the AFLW website and app, and this method of viewing may have greater appeal to a younger generation or non-traditional sports fans. Channel 7's decision, however, which Herald Sun reporter Scott Gullen claims came after its top brass gave AFLW two weeks to show it was fit for prime time, must be seen in light of the AFLW's continued difficult relationship with head office and mainstream media, particularly when it comes to inadequate promotion and marketing, sheer level of negativity, on AFLO perhaps the best example of this lies in the much maligned AFLX competition. On Thursday, Geelong star Patrick Dangerfield described criticism of the tournament as extraordinary, saying he had been gobsmacked by the sheer level of negativity leveled at the format. What the Brownlow medalist failed to take into account was that many are angry about AFLX, not because of its quirky format, but because of the hypocrisy of the AFL staging it in the middle of the AFLW season, and on a Friday night, when viewing figures are usually at their highest. This fact was clearly missed by Sen host Gerard Waitley, who also fended off criticism of the tournament by describing AFLX as filling a hopeless sporting void. This attitude, careless or not, reeks of misogyny given there is no such void whatsoever, but for a legitimate, fully-fledged and growing women's league one would assume the AFL would be desperate to promote and give the clean air Nicole Livingston promised when making the decision to cut the season down to just seven weeks. At the time, Livingston claimed teams could not play each other once because this would cause too much overlap with competitors like cricket, tennis and even the AFL men's season. It is decisions like these, as well as the choice to split the league into two controversial conferences, which incite rage in fans of the competition who want to see women given a fair go and chance to succeed. Own goal creates biggest challenger be choosing to stage AFLX in the middle of the AFLW season, as well as a live draft. Beforehand, the AFL became AFLW's biggest and worst competitor, ensuring newspaper columns and sports radio slots were dominated by those debating the merits of the upcoming men's tournament, rather than remarking on the huge strides made in AFLW Season 3. That AFLX was then staged as a gimmicky joke on which the players were in, with Alex Rance arriving on a motorized scooter, and a game of paper, scissors, rock played in place of a coin toss, added salt to the wound. There is no joke in failing to give the AFLW the space, time and promotion it was promised. The end result is that so-called lackluster viewing figures are blamed on the quality of the competition, rather 
than the context in which it has not been nourished in the way it deserves and should. Kate O'Halloran is a sports writer and former Victorian cricketer. She hosts AFLW radio show Kick Like a Girl 12 to 1 p.m. Mondays on RR and is writing a Monday column on the AFLW for the ABC. Topics, Australian Football League, Sport, Melbourne 3000, Vic, Australia, Adelaide 5000, SA, Perth 6000, WA, Brisbane 4000, Queensland.